Hi, my name is Keith Cooper from Northlight Images and in this video I'm going to look at a common idea that to get big prints you need lots of megapixels. Well, yeah, obviously, if you've got more megapixels to play with and the images are otherwise similar, then it seems quite reasonable if you want to make big prints that you need more megapixels. reason I was thinking about this was that um, I've been recently testing the Fuji GFX 100S and it's superb. I've got some great prints, there's one over in the corner here, um, that really do show lots of crisp detail. Now that's printed on 17 inch roll paper so it's a big-ish print but you don't really need 100 megapixels to print that size, uh, far from it. Um, this, uh, this video is connected to a, uh, an article I wrote in 2015 when I first got the Canon 5DS here, which is 50 megapixels or 51 megapixels, something, whatever. Um, it is essentially a very nice camera. I've used it since then. I still use it. It's enough for all my prints. Before that, I used Canon 1DS Mark III, which is about 21 megapixels. And before that, a Canon 1DS, which is about 11 megapixels. All full frame cameras. What I did, and I'll put a link to the article because it's got lots more details about the precise steps I did, how I compared things, was that I took a sequence of pictures of the same view looking up the street from outside my home using this 24mm tilt shift lens, very high quality lens. That's the view. Um, I don't remember which particular camera that was taken on, but that is the view. And it's meant to encompass a typical image I might shot. It's got, it's got greenery in it, it's got the sky, it's got some detail, it's got some shadow detail. All the sorts of stuff that you would think, yeah, this is what I'm going to use to test, you know, to test the differences between the cameras. What was I expecting? Well, the improvements from the 1DS through to the 5DS are in image quality as much as megapixels. There would be more noise, it's more difficult to process the image as well from the 1DS than it is the 5DS, 1DS3 sitting between them roughly. I used this from 2007 to 2015, this one 2015 onwards, this from 2003 to 2007. Um, I, I've, I've looked at this elsewhere in sort of various bits of cameras I've used and things, but this is about making prints. And here are this, this shot here, this is some of the photos I took. Now, you can't directly compare exposure settings, ISO settings and things between different cameras, even from the same make. Characteristics vary. So I bracketed, extreme bracketing here, 10 shots each stepping through um, exposures for each camera of the same view, taken within a few minutes of each other. There is a slight shift in the, um, in the actual setting, um, not much purely because of the uh, bracket, tripod bracket I was using between these two cameras and the 5DS there. So it's a slight difference, but essentially they're the same scene. I went through the images here and thought, which look best from raw files? So I'm looking at the raw files. Now, I'm not going to process each camera file the same way. I'm going to process each camera file as well as I can. Once I'd picked out which I thought were the ideal exposures, so there was no, uh, no obvious clipping, um, everything looked okay in the picture, I processed them. Now, originally I used Adobe Camera Raw on, pho on Photoshop CS6. I've just repeated some of the experiments here using the latest version of um, Adobe Camera Raw, the latest Photoshop, and also DxO Photo Lab, because DxO Photo Lab I do still use for some images, and it handles some of the older files very well. Um, it was much better. They've all changed. Um, if you have stuck with the same raw processing software, software for years, then something will have changed. It's worth having a look every so often just to see if anything has changed of note. Um, can be all kinds of things. The noise handling on DxO is particularly good, but these were taken at base ISO, so it's not a problem there. Uh, the demosaicing, how you go from the raw data to the actual image, that's changed somewhat, but at the level of detail we're looking at here, didn't make much difference. So what did I do? I produced nine prints. 
Now, I would have a big pile of the nine prints, but in a recent clear out, for some reason, they were put in a pile of spare paper and they've gone for recycling. Now, mind, I've got thousands of other prints, but just not those particular ones. These things happen when you tidy up. So I've got here nine prints I created. So I've got three different cameras and I'm going to produce the prints at three different settings. They are the native settings, or at 300 pixels per inch, the print sizes for it. So they range from relatively small for the 1DS up to quite large, to 19 inches by 28 inches, 27 inches, I think, for the 5DS at 300 pixels per inch. Not worried about any other differences. So I've got the native size of each print. But what about if I scale the prints, so the 1DS images, I needed to scale it to 21 megapixel and to 50 megapixels. Likewise, for the 50 megapixel, I downsample to 21 and downsample to 11. So we've got the different print combinations of them. And sure enough, I've got the nine prints here. Now, they all look pretty much of a muchness. Each one I processed what, what, in a way, what was to me the best way of processing it at the time. I then sharpened the images for print and did all the sort of work I would do on an image of that size for a print at that size. Now, the software I use today will be different to what I used in 2015, certainly different to what I used in 2007 or 2003. Things have moved on. You might think, well, OK, this seems fairly obvious. More megapixels, better looking picture. Yeah, you might think that, but with modern process, and this is before I even try specialist resampling like Gigapixel AI and things like that, the prints, when they were put, in particular the large 20, you know, 19 inch by 27 inch prints here, I showed them to a whole load of people who didn't know what I've done. And I just said, have a look at these prints. What difference can you see? Well, have a close look at them. So they had a close look at them couple noticed that the colour was slightly different. I find that the newer cameras have much better white balance than the old uh, 1DS. I need to play around with things for this. The processing, I need to be a bit more careful with colour images from this. Uh, the little white dot on the front of the Canon 1DS here is its white balance sensor. So it's actually got a specific sensor for measuring white balance. Uh, that's gone on this and on this one here. So I'm processing the files slightly different. So I've got people looking at the prints. Um, one person notices again that the view is slightly different. Yeah, I moved the camera slightly when I swapped between cameras. Somebody else looked at it and made comments about the rubbish that had been dumped in the street there. And uh, it's typical of uh, rental landlords in this local area with a lot of students in the area. When the students move out, the landlords just dump stuff. Uh, part of my disdain for landlords in general, um, because they allow this sort of stuff to, ca to happen. But did any of them pay any attention to actual fine detail? No, not one. In fact, I had to look at the prints quite carefully myself. If you look at the article, you'll see there are loads of screenshots and various other things showing all the different settings and stuff. I'm, I'm not going to go into that here. This is just about the, the essence of what we did and why. Um, yeah, you just don't see it. But surely there are real differences. Yes, these large prints here, I've just reprinted these on this, the Epson 8500 on a, on a luster paper. And I rescaled, this is the 5DS image. This is just the center part of this image. So printed at 300 uh, PPI, obviously cropped. So I've got here two pictures which look pretty much the same. In fact, my normal medium distance glasses, I can see very little difference. I can read the no tipping sign here, uh, right next to the stuff that's been fly tipped. And no, I can see no obvious difference between them. So that's 11 megapixels, 50 megapixels. If I look really closely, if I get a powerful lens out and I use this old CCTV lens as a really powerful uh, magnifying glass, 
I can see that the no tipping on one of them, I can actually read that there's a maximum £50,000 fine. On the other, the text is a bit jumbled up. Um, there is no significant difference between those images. So here we have an image from a 2003 camera, an image from a 2050, and without looking carefully, I cannot tell you between these two, which was taken with which. And this is printed as if they were 50 megapixel images, 50 uh, yeah, source images. Um, there's the original. And on this, you need to look very, very carefully and know what you're looking for to be able to see any difference on a print this size. Well, all right, that's print. But I said big prints. This print here, and this print here, uh, that's well, the Wells Cathedral. Both of those printed on 24 inch paper. So they're bigger than I can print on this Epson P5000. These were tested when I was testing the P7500. Um, both of those are images taken on the 21 megapixel 1DS Mark III. I've rescaled them, I've upscaled them. I believe in these ones, I did upscale them using Gigapixel AI. And in looking at the prints, big prints you look at further away, um, I don't think there is any difference to what the print would look like for anyone actually looking at it. If I took the picture with this, if I took the picture with this, or I had, let's say, the Canon R5, about 45 megapixels. So it's essentially the same as this, just better dynamic range, few other features. It's a, you know, it's a newer sensor. So there's very little difference between it. So next time you see people arguing about how many megapixels you need for printing and stuff like that, remember it's all about context and it's all about your printing skills and your image editing skills. Um, I'm not going to pretend that it didn't take some work to get these pictures looking the way they did. Sure, would have been much easier. Um, I have got, I say, has an image here, from, which is 100 megapixel source image. Now that is really sharp, but there's lots of detail in it. I didn't need 100 megapixel for it. So when you see people saying, well, I need more megapixels, why do they need them? Um, for making prints and supplying images, most of the prints I do, for making um, prints and supplying images to clients, uh, this 50 megapixel is more than enough. Sure, it lets me crop if I wasn't able to get the composition right. Sure, it might make it a bit easier if I want to do stitching and a few other things like that. But really, do I need all those megapixels? No, no. Now, do I want to get rid of those megapixels? No, I don't. I'd quite like to have GFX 100S because of the flexibility it gives me. For sometimes I really do want lots of detail in images. Some of my industrial work, for example, I really do need it. Some of the uh, macro work I do, I need the resolution out of this because of you know, how you get the images out of it, what I get from it. But for normal everyday shots and quite large prints, um, any reasonably high megapixel camera you've got will be able to give you good prints. It's, I'm going to say one caveat to that again, it is of course you do need a good lens. Um, a good lens will make all of the difference. That's why I, when I said recently about, you know, that if you're considering buying a new camera, look at second hand for the camera body. Spend your money on the lenses. The lenses are where the real effort comes through. But I say there we have something that went, I wanted to test it by actually making prints rather than just the usual forum stuff of anyone. The moment we say forum thread and it's got calculations in it connecting to, you know, lines per inch and whatever. Yeah, interesting maybe, but how interested am I in that? No, I'm interested in what the prints look like. I just look at that and go, yeah, I can get that from 21 megapixels. Great, that does it. Could I do better? Hmm, yes, I could. Likewise with that and other things as well. But do have a, if you're unsure of this, of the process I've gone through, have a read of the article. Uh, it's got, got like quite a lot of detail, looks at noise and other things as well, because obviously noise is much worse in these and is less in, in this with modern cameras and also your processing. But so there you go, megapixels. Who needs them? Well, I quite like them, but um, they're perhaps not quite as important in some respects as some people might have you think. Um, there you go. I hope that's been of interest. Um, so do, do have a look at the article as well. Um, my articles go back 
20 years worth of articles on the North Light site. Um, and there are many more of them than obviously the videos. I've only been doing the videos for a couple of years. If you've got any questions, feel free to comment, feel free to ask, because they're often what sort of give me ideas for videos and the like. I um, hope you found it interesting. And um, well, just go out and take some pictures. Thanks. Oh, please do subscribe to the channel.